This is 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 10. And it reads, Which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts and war against thy soul. Before I go any further, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, Baha Rakakwadash, which is the Paleo Hebrew for the name of the Heavenly Father being Yahweh, and that of his Son being Yahweh Shai. The only names in which salvation may be obtained, whether you were able to receive that or not. I'd like to give double honors to the elders and the apostles at GMS Great Millstone and to the Spirit and Power of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, all of the nation of Israel well today. Once again, whether you can receive that or not. And peace, love, blessing, salutations be unto the elect of the house of Israel who are pushing this truth and truth and sincerity and charity and faith and who are able to receive these things that are needful for salvation all through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> and as you've seen here, man, there's going to be another volume, all right, to the series going to the prophecies and confounding Christianity. Because as you see, this is just another verse which is vastly used out of context by the Christian church and various other branches of Christianity, man. And it's all due to a lack of understanding of the prophecies that surround the context of this verse, man. So once again, we're going to go into it. We're going to go into the prophecies and we're going to receive, if the Most High is dealing with you, you will receive the proper understanding of what is being spoken of here. All right, so without further ado, this is First Peter 2 and uh, verse 9. It says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a particular people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. You see, because us, the Israelites, the nation of Israel, was led captive into all nations, man. You see, this was a, a, a curse, a prophecy that would happen unto them, that would happen to the Israelites. So with that being said, they were led into, into, into the ways of darkness with the heathen ruling over them. All right, let's go ahead and grab another uh, precept real quick and then we'll jump back. Yahweh Ratazah. This is uh, the book of Hosea. Chapter 8 and verse 8. It says, Israel is swallowed up. Now... Shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein there is no pleasure? You see that, man? The Israelites would be swallowed up by the heathen nations. This is a prophecy. This is a curse that would befall upon the children of Israel if they disobeyed the covenant that they had between them and the Most High. Which is exactly what they did. And that's why they needed a Messiah. You see? Because we were led unto destruction. We were led into captivity through these other nations, man. So we needed a way out. We needed salvation. That's why the Israelites were crying out for salvation during the time of the New Testament. You see, this this was the context or the timeline of what was going on during this time, man. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back. First Peter. Let's see where were we? First Peter, uh, chapter two. And and con verse nine. What did it say? who are called out of this darkness into his marvelous light. So we've been led into all these different nations and 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 put under them, man. Eh? Fighting their wars, all right, and leading all the way to a point that, you know, you're you're picking up their customs, worshiping their uh, uh their their gods. You see? Basically, you are heathens, man. But the heavenly Father said that he's called them out of this marvelous light. And and how do we know that it's talking about the Israelites and not the heathen nations? Well, because the prophecy said that this thing was, was exclusively between Israel, the nation of Israel, and the Heavenly Father, man. Let's go ahead and just grab that just real quick. <clears throat> and there's many scriptures on this, man, but, you know, just to support what I had said, this is Sirach 17 and 17. It says, for in the division of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people, but Israel is the Lord's portion, you see. Every people had a ruler, every people had a king, but our king is the most high. You see, this is what separates us from all the nations, man. We are the princes of power here on the planet earth, all right? But we've lost that, uh, that, that mentality, you see. We went from kings, from rulers, to the base of man, to, well, to being under the base of man even, man. 
All right. So Second Peter uh, two and verse ten it says, "Which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God." Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna examine this and see what the context was that was going on here. He said that these people were not a people at a time. They would lose who they were. But they have now been they have now been set at a place to, to be able to return to the Heavenly Father. How is that? Through the Messiah, you see? Through the the the, the Hamashayak, man, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. Alright, this man, this this man was that was a sacrifice. For the nation of Israel to, to, to be able to receive forgiveness of sins for what they've done. What did the other nations do that they needed uh, 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 forgiveness for? They weren't even under the law. You see? But going on, verse 11, it says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts and war against the soul. You see? Because we've been led and we, we, we've been dumbed down, man. We've been institutionalized. We've received this black culture, this brown culture, all this different stuff, which is nothing but death. You see, but the Heavenly Father is warning you against him, man. Wake up and come out of that flesh and return unto who you are. Because you are not what, you, what you've been told to be by, by the oppressor upon the colonization of the Western Hemisphere. All right, you're more than that. And you have a law which you're supposed to uphold and abide by, you see. That's why it goes on to tell you this, verse 12. Having a conversation honest among the Gentiles... That whereas they speak against you as evildoers, you see, these, these Gentiles, these heathens in the world, they look at you and they should they should feel some, some type of way about you, man. And, and, and the reason why is because you're doing something totally different than what's been taught to, to or, or pushed within this uh, world, man. And why? Because the base of man is set on top over it. It says, that whereas they speak evil as you as evildoers, they... May, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. You see, they'll see that there's something different about you, man. You, you abstain from different things. You abstain from pork. You abstain from going in on a, on, on a, on a, a, a man's woman committing adultery. You see, you have guidelines that you now live by. You see, you're different than, than you know, what we were taught to be uh, upon, upon our uh, slavery and genocide, man. All right, but let's go, back, go ahead and go back up and, and examine this, uh, this main verse here. All right, verse 10, which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God. Now, let's go to the prophecy in which uh, uh, is being quoted here. All right, which, you know, we've gotten we've gotten this before, man, on one of the other volumes. But, you know, the same prophecy is is is, is being uh, is being uh, quoted here, which is the book of Hosea. Chapter two. And let's see, verse, uh, let's see here, man, it's lock you. <clears throat> verse 23, and I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her who have not obtained mercy. You see it? This is word for word of what was being, uh, uh, uh quoted in the book of Second Peter's, man, or in the book of First Peter's, the second chapter. All right, it says, and I will say unto them, which were not my people, thou art my people, and they shall say, thou art my God. You see that, man? So, let's go ahead Let's go ahead and backtrack a little bit to see exactly who it's talking about. All right? To see who these people are that would not be called Israelites anymore, man. All right? But that would, in fact, be called, uh, 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 you know, heathens. All right? Would be cast off. All right, let's go ahead and go to Hosea, because really this Hosea 1 and 2 just go hand in hand together. All right, but I want to hit this piece here. <clears throat> this is uh, Hosea 1 and 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass in that place where it was said, Salakia, unto them ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. So you see the same exact thing being said here in verse uh, uh, Hosea 1 and in Hosea 2. All right, so once again, let's go ahead and back up and see why they were being, uh, why they were not called the Heavenly Father's people, man. Let's see, this is, uh, let's see, this is verse, verse 8. It says, now... 
when she had weaned Lo Rahuma, she conceived and bare a son. All right, so the prophet Hosea had a son, man. Verse 9, it says, Then said God, Call his name Lo Amai, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. You see that? The Heavenly Father told Hosea to call his son this name, which was had a symbolic meaning, meaning that these people were no longer the Heavenly Father's people. You see? And that he was no longer their God. You see, we were cast off to have these heathens do whatever the hell they wanted to with us, man. You see? And that's why when we go on to uh, chapter 2, because it continues. All right? Because these, the, 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 what, what, what you once had, it was just a scroll, man. That, that these verses were written on. They weren't broken up into separate chapters and verses. All you had was the book of Hosea. You see the book of uh, Leviticus. All right. The, the, the book of Matthew. All right. So as you go on, you, you know, they just they just continue to, to uh, feed off of each other. So to have uh, so to speak. All right. But going on, it says. Uh, <clears throat> Hosea two and four. And I will not have mercy upon her children for they be the children of whoredoms. You see, the children of Israel are likened unto the children of whoredoms. And, and part of that is because, you know, we've went, we've went on into these heathen nations, worshiped their gods, and committed an act of spiritual fornication, man. You see, the Heavenly Father is our power, but we've went ahead and a horde with these other nations, with these other gods, man, with these other ideologies. And not only that, but we've, we've mingled ourselves in with all these other nations, looking and acting like all these particular nations. When you go into the book of Acts, the second chapter, that's why it tells you that you had Jews gathered from every single nation that were speaking the tongues of those nations in which they lived. They weren't able to, to, to all speak with one another, but the Holy Spirit began to work within them, and they were speaking uh, uh, to one another. They were able to speak to each other in their own languages, man, which was a, which was a, a, a you know, a, a, a work of the spirit. You see, but going on, it says, verse five, for their mother hath played the harlot. She hath conceived them, hath done shamefully, for she hath said, I will go after my lovers, being those heathen nations that gave me my bread and my water. You see the, the heavenly father, he said, all right, all right, go ahead. I'm going to give you over to these heathen nations. We're going to see how good you have it. And. Be, lo and behold, this is what you have today, man. This is the outcome of the Israelites, the true princes of power, being alienated from the heavenly father, man. But you see, throughout all this, there was something that was that was that was that was spoken, man. Prophecy. You see, the prophecies were spoken to 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 let us know that this wasn't it, man. That the heavenly father would still have mercy on those who hath not obtained mercy. Who did we not obtain mercy from? The heathen. Because we were given into their hands. And look what they've done to the apple of the most high's eye, man. Verse 6, it says, Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy way with thorns and make thy wall that she shall not find her paths. You see, and that's why you got so many uh, uh, totally remedial so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans today. Don't know what side they're on, man. Don't know what is going on. Just happy with the bread and circuses, the gimmicks that they've been given by the oppressor, man. He gave you a Swisher Sweet, uh, a Black Panther movie, and uh, some Jordans, and you're cool with just staying here and building up his kingdom till you die, man. But we are here to tell you that we are more than that, man, through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Shai. We are the princes of this earth, man. We are the salt of this earth. You see, and the Heavenly Father will restore us, and He hath not forgotten us, just like we got in the twenty-third verse. But let's go. Ahead. I think the point, the point's been uh, come across here, man. Let's go ahead and jump down. Well, actually, before we get into this, let me go ahead and grab a precept. This is uh, Isaiah forty-six and verse ten. It reads, "Declaring the end from the beginning." Wait a minute. Oh, let's go. Let's go back. Verse nine. It says. Remember the former things of old, for I am Yahweh, and there is none else. I am Yahweh, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning. You see that? We know the end from the beginning because the Heavenly Father hath declared it unto us, man. We know that there is salvation coming unto us. We know that the nation of Israel would be forgiven, and that's why you had the Messiah arrive on the time of the New Testament. That's why last time we were reading in the books, uh, uh, the, the book of Luke uh, uh, 1 and 2, the first and second chapter. And what were they doing, man? It all began with them rejoicing at the arrival 
of, of, of John the Baptist and Yahweh Shai Hamashayak, knowing and understanding that that marked the, the deliverance and salvation of the nation of Israel and the downfall of the heathen which was reigning over us and oppressing not only us, man, but the entire planet from, from the insects unto us, you see? Going on, it says, <clears throat> And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. You see that man? His counsel shall stand. The words of Yahweh by Shem Shai are that which will stand. All right. Anything else that is said or spoken, if they don't go back to a prophecy, man, then it ain't going to stand. You see? It's really not hard to get, man. But, but what do we say earlier? From a lack of understanding, you have what you have today. From a lack of research, man. Just, just believe in what Esau has told you. But never picking up the book yourself to read. A destructive mentality that's been pushed upon us, man. Why? To keep, to keep you uh, uh, simple, man. To keep you dumbed down. To keep you where you're at. And to ultimately keep the oppressor where he is at. All right, well, let's go ahead and jump back to, uh, uh, where were we, Hosea. This is Hosea chapter 2, and uh, Salaki, where were we at, man? We're, uh, oh yeah, we just jump, jumped uh, down here. This is uh, verse 18. It says, And I, in that day, will make a covenant with, the, with them, with the beasts, or for them, with the beasts of the field, and with the fowls of heaven, and with the creeping things of the ground, and I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth. So the weapon will be destroyed. This is also how you know Edom will be destroyed. It says, and will make them to lie down safely. You see, peace will be established on the planet earth once the nation of Israel is put back into their proper place, man. This is the, the, the covenant or, or, or the fulfillment of these prophecies and covenants within this Bible, man. Peace on earth. And how is it going to be done? By the nation of Israel being delivered, man. But you see, Christianity has a, teaches you a, just this one verse that gets cherry-picked and butchered, tattooed on somebody's leg, and just a complete lack of understanding of how beautiful this scripture actually is, man. Verse 19, it says, And I, and I will betroth thee unto me forever. You see that? He will betroth the nation of Israel unto himself forever. What did it say in Sirach 17 and 17? All nations have a king, but we have the most high. But what did, what did the context of this chapter and the previous one, Hosea 1 and 2 say? That we went a-whoring with these other nations, man. But now we are going to be betrothed unto the Heavenly Father, you see. It's like that old saying in the world, you can't make a hoe out of a housewife. Well, guess what, man? The, 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 this, this whole Israel is getting turned into a, into a housewife of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, man. <laughs> basically what this is saying all right it says ye uh yeah i will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercies you know how much mercy that is man just imagine your woman went out a horn with all these different men and then you still took her back but you see through the spirit we're gonna get a new body and what have you all right we're gonna get cleansed but that's still a lot of mercy man because I, I i don't i don't i don't i know i wouldn't be able to do that man and I know, you know, I speak for myself, but I know a lot of brothers, if not all of them, <laughs> wouldn't be able to do that either, man. But anyway, going on verse 20, it says, I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know Yahweh. And it shall come to pass in that day, I will say unto her, or it's lucky, I will hear, and saith the Lord, I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth. You see, and that goes back to also to the prophecies, man. The Heavenly Father said, because I have called and you had not answered, I will not hear you. You see, I'm done with you Israelites, man. But you see, the elect are going to be able to return, and he's going to hear those cries of the elect, man. They're going to know the name and, and, and understand the, the severity of this thing, man. All right. Going on, verse uh, 22, it says, And the earth shall hear the corn, and the wine, and the oil, and they shall hear Jezreel, and I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy on her that have not, not obtained mercy, and I will say unto her which were not my people, thou art my people, and they shall say thou art my God. Why were they not his people? Because they were led captive into all nations, looking and acting and, 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 and moving upon all the gimmicks and vibrations that the other nations were putting forth, man, making us 
spiritual heathens, Israelites in the flesh, but spiritual heathens, man. We were not his people any longer. But what did he do, man? He had mercy on us. How did we know he would have mercy? Through the prophecies. All this understanding brought through through these prophecies, man. And all ultimately through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. But you ain't gonna understand these prophecies without that. Alright, let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and jump to the book of Isaiah. Chapter 62, which also says something similar, man. In verse uh, 4. It reads, Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shalt the land any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Hezifba, and thy land Beulah. For the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. You see that, man? Thy land shall be married. Is this not the exact same prophecy that we just read out of the book of Hosea? The chapter uh, first and second chapters and out of first Peter's two and ten. The same exact thing that was being spoken, but yet once again, man, it'll be cherry picked right out of that uh, uh second Peter's two and ten. Or right out of that first Peter's chapter two and ten, with a complete lack of understanding and disregard for the prophecies and context in which that scripture was written, man. Going on, uh let's go ahead, let's go ahead and jump uh uh jump back. Verse 3, it says, Thou shalt be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal deity in the hand of thy God, being the Israelites, man. Verse 5, it says, For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as a bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. You see, and that's why you have the, these parables such as the parables of the, of the, uh, uh, of the marriage feast. All right, with, within the New Testament, man, because this is talking about the nation of Israel being married back into the Heavenly Father. All right, verse 6, it says, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. Wait a minute, O Jerusalem? What did, what, 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 why does it say O Jerusalem and not O John 3.16? O Jerusalem and not O nations, O ye nations, O ye Edomites, O ye uh, Moabites, O ye world. It says, I have set watchmen upon upon thy walls O Jerusalem so the heavenly father has brought up particular individuals within the nation of Israel who are known within this scripture within the prophecies as watchmen now what would these men be doing would they be getting up on these walls and just you know partying and bullshitting waiting until the most high comes back let's see it says which have which shall n never hold their peace day nor night ye that make mention of yahweh keep not silence these men would have the spirit upon them to push this truth man you see going on it says and what to say they will never keep silence man they esau ain't gonna hey when 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 the truth started being 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 pushed that was the mark of of of, of, of this place being destroyed man Shoot, even when you, when Yahweh Shai came came on the scene, that was mar well, all the way back when 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 before any of this stuff was 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 put in the foundation of the earth, man. When the heavenly Father spoke it, it was a done deal. You see, verse seven it says, "And give him no rest till he established. Give him no rest, as he they ain't gonna be partying and bullshit. They ain't gonna be just resting." You know, don't get me wrong, brothers. Have, brothers, have, you know, you got to do what you got to do here. You got to work. You got you got a heavy uh, 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 a lot that you have to balance being a man of the Lord, you see, because between between this truth and, and you having to work or whatever it is that you do, you have no free time. man. That's why it says give him no rest till he establish and till he make Jerusalem a praise on the earth. Who the world a praise on the earth? Jerusalem. That's when you, when you go into Revelation 21, the 21st chapter, and it tells you what the kingdom of heaven is going to look like as it'll be established here on earth. It tells you that there are 12 gates with the 12 names of the children of Israel. That will be our home. You see, you nations have particular places and portions of land where you'll be. You'll find that in the book of Obadiah, the end of the chapter. All right. But the, 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 the kingdom... All right, our dwelling will be for the nation of Israel, man. 
And it's going to be beyond that that you ever have seen or ever could even had imagined. According to the scriptures, man. I mean, look, look, look at these, look at these mansions and castles that you see today, man. I was listening to the uh, 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 jazz, uh, a jazz station the other day, man. It was a beautiful song. And at the end of the song, they began to explain how uh, it was, it was uh, inspired by a man having went and just saw seeing a castle in uh, in in Europe, man. So just imagine what's even more to come. The scriptures say, "I have not seen or ear hath heard," man. That's what we're fighting for. We're fighting because we, we know and understand that there's more than just this out here, man. The Heavenly Father hath given us the vision to see beyond this place. All right, so fuck this place, man. Let's get up out of here and get home and 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 and, and just just get better, man. Everything that you see is dying from the from the from the base things of the earth. All right, from these very plants and, and, and even the weeds are dying, man. All the way up unto the children of Israel, man. Verse 8, it says, The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength. Surely I will no more give thy corn for the meat to, the, to be meat of thine enemies. You see, our corn, this earth was given to us, man. But you see, it's been given into the hands of our enemies. That's why you see things like this in the uh, Apocrypha. This is uh, Sanke Esdras chapter 6 and verse 57. It reads, and now, O Lord, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. But we, thy people, whom thou callest thy firstborn and thy only begotten. What, what, what is he referring to? We just got a similar uh, 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 precept out of Sirach 17 and 17. You see? Out of all the people of the face of the earth, he chose Israel to be the lot of his inheritance, man. Thy only begotten and thy fervent lover are given into their hands. If the world be made now for our sakes, you see the world was created for the sakes of the Israelites, man. The other nations, all right, are tributaries unto the nation of Israel. It says, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? There is no inheritance for us, man. This shows you that the people that are in Israel today are not the true Israelites. Because upon them returning, there's supposed to be peace on earth. And not only that, but it's supposed to be a miraculous turnover. It's supposed to be the destruction the, the, of the wicked and the greatest victory ever to be seen on the planet earth, man. And the outcome being peace on earth. At, well, a, after a time of servitude and, 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 and you know the, the kingdom being established and built up, well, that's going to have to be built. But at the end of the day, man, there will be, there will be peace. All right? And once again, that's that's beginning with us being put back on that throne through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. It's going back to uh, Isaiah, uh, where were we? Sixty-two and verse eight, and it reads, "The Lord has sworn this by His right hand and by the arm of His strength. Surely I will no more give the corn for meat unto the enemies and thy sons of the." Stranger shall not drink thy wine for the which thou hast labored. You see, you got everything that you see, man. We've built up here. You see, we've built these dwellings, we've built these buildings. You see, we 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 uh pick the the the, the veggies and stuff that you eat out of your little fruit salads from the store, man. This is all Jake that's been laboring for this stuff, man. We we pick these things and we don't eat it. And this goes back to the curses of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the things that would befall upon the nation of Israel if we uh forsook that covenant, man. All right, but what, but what do you say? All right, and this is a prophecy. You see, Isaiah was prophesying, telling you what was going to come to the nation of Israel, man. Verse 9, it says, But they that have gathered it shall eat it, and the praise of the Lord. We're going to finally be able to enjoy the fruits of our labor, man. This is what this is, what this is telling you. And they that have brought, brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. Go through, go through the gates, prepare you the way of the people cast up, cast up the highway, gather out stones, lift up a standard for the people. Why? Verse 11. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. Say ye to the daughter of Zion to who? He proclaimed to the end of the world. Shouldn't he, shouldn't he be proclaiming to all the people of the world? 
No, he says, say ye to the daughter of Zion. So why, why was it to the end of the world? Because they're amongst the entire world. They've been scattered throughout the entire world. But through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Shai, they will return. An elect remnant will return back unto him, man. It says, Behold, thy salvation is cometh. Behold, his reward is with him. And what's that word salvation mean? That means the deliverance of the molestation of thine enemies. It says, And his work before him, and they shall call them the holy people and the redeemed of the Lord. If you were redeemed, then you had to have been once part of it and then fallen, you see. And thou shalt be called, sought out a city, not forsaken, you see. They will be redeemed by the heavenly father. And will. this is the same exact thing that we read out of Hosea once again, man. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, uh, I want to grab just a... Uh, one more precept, and then we'll uh, we'll go ahead and just jump back into that into that uh, uh, where we started into that first Peter's. But this is uh, Hebrews chapter nine and verse fifteen. Just because what we had just read, you know, through the Spirit, you know, this is uh, uh it says. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. You see, the Messiah, he is the mediator. You see, the connecting point between us and the Heavenly Father of the New Testimony. You see, because that first testimony was broken. It says, that by means of death for the redemption, wait, 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 those that were redeemed, it said the Israelites were redeemed, man, for the redemption of the transgressors that were under the first testament. Who were under the first testament? The Israelites. They broke that first te testament, so it had to be rebound through the Heavenly Father, man. The second testimony that, that is upon better promises, you see? This covenant that's been rebound through Yahweh Shai HaMashayach, through his sacrifice, which has redeemed those that were under the first testament. Not the whole world. Let the whole world just take our blessing. You see, it says, they which are called might receive the promises of eternal inheritance. But not only all the Israelites, but those that are called. Those are going to be the first fruits of heaven. The rest of you are going to have to taste death here on this side, man. You're going to die right along with your oppressor that you love so much. You see? Let's go ahead and jump back. This is First Peter, chapter 2. Let's read it again, man. Now that we now that we got the proper understanding, we're gonna read it again, and you're gonna realize how uh, how how easy this uh, uh, verse is to understand, and how beautiful it is when you read it within the right context. Now, First Peter two and eight, it says, "And a stone of stumbling, a and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed, but." Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. And what's it, what it's talking about is the Messiah, you see. Because the only way to come back to the Heavenly Father is through that sacrifice, man. That through that lamb, that blood sacrifice that's been made to give forgiveness of sins of the nation of Israel. Because you see, when you, when you understand the law, you understand that the Heavenly Father requires blood at, a, at, a, at, a, at any transgression, man. All right, At a transgression of man, he requires blood to, to pardon that sin, to pardon that inequity. You see, Yahweh Shai was, was, the, was, was that pardoning blood for the nation of Israel. Just like during the time of the Passover, they put the blood on their doorpost to pardon them, man. But you see, 230, you Israelites, you don't have that blood on your doorpost because you don't believe in Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, man. So there is no forgiveness for you. Your blood will be upon your own head. That's basically what this is saying, man. Verse 9, it says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. But see, you see, the, 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 there's a specific amount out of Israel that's going to receive this, man. They are, they are, a, a, a royal priesthood and a holy nation, you see, out of that nation of Israel, man, those are going to be the ones that, that, that are those first fruits, you see, that are delivered, that receive mercy to, to, to ultimately save the entire nation, all right, because without the elect being delivered, there would be no nation of Israel, all right, a particular people, that ye should show forth the praises of him, you see, that are different than those in the world. We show forth the praises of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. Not the praises of money, not the praises of, uh, uh, you know, your woman's booty, whatever it is that you're caught up into in this world. It says, who hath caught out, who, or so lucky, who hath called you out of darkness. We were once doing all the same shit in this world, man. That's why, that's why there's no place to be proud with in this thing. Because the Heavenly Father could replace us at any moment, man. Just as easily as he called us at any moment. It says, 
who hath called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. Call out Yamalaya Halbashim Yahushai. Verse 10, it says, Which in times past were not a people, but are now a people of God. We were also heathens, man. <laughs> we were cat we were living just like these heathens. We got our tattoos and stuff on us. Probably some of them got some Babylonian type shit. You see, we were just like these heathens, man. Just like these people, man. We were not the people of God at, at, a, at a point in time. But through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, you get called and you start making changes, changes to your lifestyle. You start becoming a new creature, going from mortals to immortals, you see? Going from peasants to, to, to a class of rulership, man. Going on, it says, which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God. You see that? From mortals to immortals. Which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. You see that, man? And how have they obtained that mercy? Through the prophecies in which we just gotten. At that time, many did understand. That's why they were waiting for Yahweh Shai, because they knew he was going to bring them mercies, man. But they, didn't, they, they, they were thinking that that mercy and deliverance was going to be right then and there. Yahweh Shai was going to come and lift up a sword and just destroy the Romans or something. You see, there had to there has to be patience because there were many many prophecies to still come to pass. It says, verse eleven, dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts. You see, we've been in this world as strangers and pilgrims, man. We still are. Why? Because we ain't part of this world. The scripture said, be be in the world, but not of it. Strangers and pilgrims, man, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, man. So keep, keep, don't be touching the shit in Babylon, man. You see, try to separate yourself, which is a hard thing to do, man. It don't happen overnight, and even afterwards, you're still gonna, you're still gonna be tried, man. You're still gonna be getting tried, but the heavenly Father will always give you a way out, man. Going on, verse twelve, having your consolation honest among the Gentiles. That whereas they speak against you as evildoers, look at this guy doing all this, doing that. He used to be the life of the party. It says, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. You see, setting an example into the nation of Israel of how to conduct themselves, man. Constant uh, 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 reminder in a way that, that we need to keep within our head uh, to conduct ourselves properly, you see. But that that that's it, man. That's that, that through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahusha, I believe that uh, you know that the point's been made. And uh, Lord will and the elect been edified, man. You have seen another volume, all right, of going to the prophecies and confounding Christianity. As you see very clearly that when you go to these prophecies, it confounds Christianity. Point blank period, man. Call Ayim La Yahweh Bashim Yahusha Bashim Kakwadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles at GMS Great Millstone. Peace, love, blessings, salutations to the elect. Shalom, shalom.